Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. In this tutorial, we will understand what is Spring Batch and its architecture. Also, we are going to develop an application using Spring Batch, who will process a huge volume of data in a fraction of time. Okay, alright. Before we jump into implementation, let's have a quick look into Spring Batch and its architectural flow. Basically, Spring Batch is one of the core module of Spring Framework and using this Spring Batch, you can create robust batch processing system. Now you might ask, what is batch processing, right? Batch processing is a technique which processes data in a large group instead of a single element of data where you can process a high volume of data with minimal human interaction. Now let's understand what is the exact use case or when do you need this batch processing system. So in short, Whenever you want to transform huge number of data from source to destination, then that time you must need to use this Spring Batch concept. For example, let's say you want to design one billing analysis system. So you have the billing information with you as a CSV format and you want to dump that CSV to database. Okay? So here, source is your CSV file and destination will be your database. Now let's assume batch processing technique is not there then you need to insert each and every row of that CSV file to database by writing insert statement, which is really a painful job, isn't it? So for this kind of scenario, it's good to use batch processing so that your job will be faster and you can save your time. Similarly, you can think of another use case that is report generation. Let's say every day you want to export either CSV or Excel report by fetching data from database. So here, database will be your source and file or CSV file will be your destination, right? So this can also quickly be done if you are using any batch processing technique. There can be n number of use cases, but for this example, we'll demonstrate the first scenario where we are going to upload a large CSV file to database within a second using task executor framework, okay? That's fine. Now let's try to understand Spring Batch core component and their flow of execution. So the first key component in Spring Batch architecture is job launcher. So this job launcher is an interface. This used to launch a Spring Batch jobs. You can also say this as an entry point to initiate any job in Spring Batch. It has a method called run who will trigger the job object or job component you can say. So once job launcher call the run method, immediately it will create another component that is job. A job can be defined as the work to be executed using Spring Batch. This work might involve a simple or complex task. Once job launcher launches a job, immediately it will call another component that is called job repository. Okay? So this job repository helps to maintain state of job whether it is succeed or failed. Suppose a Spring Batch job was running and an error occurs. How does Spring Batch know that an error has occurred and the job needs to be rerun? Right? So we need to save state of the jobs and further execution should take this into consideration. State management is an important aspect when processing large volume of data. This is achieved using the Spring Batch job repository. Okay. Now next, this job component will talk to another component of Spring Batch that is step. Step is nothing, combination of other three components like item reader, item processor and item writer. Okay. Where item reader will read the data from source. So in our scenario, source will be our CSV file. Okay. Similarly, item processor will process the data. If you want to do any operation in between reading and writing, then you can use this item processor. Similarly, item writer will help you to write the data to the destination. In our case, destination will be database, right? Because we want to read the CSV and we want to dump that CSV to the database. I believe this is all clear for you. A job can also have a multiple steps and as usual, steps can have multiple item reader, processor and writer. This is what all architecture of Spring Batch or you can get context about all the core component of Spring Batch. Okay. Now let's quickly create a new Spring Boot project to demonstrate this scenario. So without any further delay, let's get started. Create a new project, click on file, click on new project, then click next, then give the group ideas com.javatiki 
then i will specify the artifact id as batch processing demo project name i will give the same then i will change the jdk version to jdk 8 then i will give the package name as com.javatechi.spring.batch okay now click next let me add all the required dependency we are using the latest version of spring boot 2.6.7 so i will add the lombok dependency then i will add the web dependency then i will also add the spring batch related dependency spring batch then since i just want to input my csv data to database i need this mysql and also i want jpa dependency right jpa okay i believe that's fine now click on next click on finish it will take few second it may download all the latest dependency so here application imported successfully it downloaded all the latest version of jar now as per our requirement we just need to i'll show you the excel file or the csv file which you want to dump into our database using this spring batch so if i'll open this this is your the csv file with the field id first name last name email gender contact number country and date of birth okay i have 1000 row over here this csv file i just want to save this csv file to the dv with fraction of second using the task executor and spring batch framework so for this csv file i need to create a entity class because i need to save this to my database right so i'll go to the src i will go to the main then i will create couple of package here create new package i'll give the package name called entity then i'll give the package name called config then i'll create another package called repository then create a package called controller okay fine so to map this csv information to the object i need to create one object which will store in my dv right so for that i need to create a entity class so i'll go to this entity package and i'll create a class called customer fine inside this customer i need to add few field but before that let me annotate here this is my table so i'll specify entity and i will specify the other table annotation i'll give the name of the table you can give something like customer info or something like that okay then i need to add few field id first name last name gender contact number country and dob whatever the input or the column is available in my csv file all the information i want to save to the db so i define all the header as a variable or the column in my table okay let me import this this is your my primary key so i'll just add it okay now next i need to create a dao class or repository class right so i'll just create a java class it will be interface so i'll name it customer okay then i will extend it from jp repo then give the entity here customer then primary key data type of here primary key which is the integer right now i created my entity and i created my repository now i need to make the connection from my application to the database right so for that in my application dot properties i need to add all the data source related properties so add this data source driver class url username password then so sql hibernate ddl auto and the server port and the dialect and here spring batch initialize schema i specify always here and i just want to disable job run at startup okay on application startup i just i don't want to run the batch job i want to run the batch job whenever i will trigger from my controller that is why i just make it false that's fine now now next i just need to add that customer.csv file inside this resource folder you can keep it outside but let me copy it to the resource folder so i'll go to my desktop then i'll just copy that csv file let me copy this and i'll paste it inside this resource folder fine so you can see here id first name and all the 
thousand row is there in my CSV file. You can create more uh, number of row in that CSV file to test your API. But with thousand row, I can show you how it will be done within a second. It don't take much more than second. Okay. So we have the entity, we have the repo, and we added the CSV file which you want to map to this particular entity and want to store in the DB. Right. Now the next step, we need to create the Spring Batch component or Spring Batch config. So if you can remember, as per the architecture, we just need to create item reader who will read the data from my CSV file. Then also we need to write item processor who will process the data in between reading and writing. And we need to create item writer component who will write the data to database. Okay. And all three component once we create, we need to give these three component to the step. Then once we created the step, that step we need to give to the job object. So these are the component we need to configure in our Spring Batch code. So I will just create a class here, new Java class. I will name it Spring Batch Config. Then I will just annotate here at the rate configuration. And also you need to enable the batch processing. So there is annotation you can use enable batch processing in the Spring framework. This will tell to the Spring Boot for this particular application, user want to enable the batch processing. Okay. Now what I'll do, I will inject two factory class for job and step. So if you can remember the flow diagram, we have the step and job, right? So to create the step, there is a step builder factory. To create the job, there is a job builder factory. So I just need to inject that, that two interfaces here. So I'll just add private job builder factory then private step builder factory and here in the item writer I want to save the data to my database right so I will just inject the repository here customer repo that's fine you can annotate at the rate auto add but since I have these three, so I will just use the constructor here. I will just use all argument constructor. If you have more than one constructor, then you might define at the rate auto air. Since I don't want other constructor apart from these three attribute, I can just define a all argument constructor. Then spring batch, this particular bin will inject these three bin. Okay. Then next, as per the flow diagram, we just need to create reader, processor and writer object. Right. So first I will create the reader object. So let me zoom this. What I will do here, I will just create a reader bin which will be flat file item reader or something like that. Yeah, flat file item reader. Here I will provide the generic as a customer. Fine. Then you can give the name as a reader or something like that. Then I will just define this at the rate bin. Since you want to read from the CSV file, so there is a class given by Spring Batch that is flat file item reader. Okay. So you can simply use this class flat file item reader to read the information from your source. Okay. So I'll just create object of it. Flat file item reader. Item reader equal to new flat file item reader. You can pass the generic here. Let me pass it here. Customer. That's fine, right? I can specify this side also. Now in this item reader, I need to tell where is my file located. So I will just give item reader dot set resource. I can give this uh, new file system resource. Then I will give the path of my file. So my file present inside src, src then resource src main resource right src main resources then the file name file name is customers.csb now also in this item reader i need to set the name you can give any name here item reader dot set name i'll just give something like csv reader any name you can give here then you need to tell to the item reader while reading my csv file just ignore the or just keep the first line because that is the header 
that information i don't want to store to uh, save to my database right i just want the second line onwards so you can tell to skip the first line item reader dot set lines to skip is one fine now next also you need to define a line mapper we will understand what is the line mapper let me create a method first line mapper then i will just create a method fine then next just create the object of this line mapper so there is a class called default line mapper line mapper yeah i'll just create the object of it you can also define the type generic i'll give customer line mapper equal to new default line mapper fine now in this line mapper see the csv file i will show you here is comma separated value right we need to tell in this line mapper this is what the delimiter we are using as a comma you just extract it and map to the object which is my customer object that is what we just need to define inside this line mapper how to read the csv file and how to map the data from the csv file to the customer object that is what the job of this line mapper method so i will just define the delimiter tokenizer just create object of it then here just set the uh, delimiter which we are using the comma right set delimiter is the comma then you can set the strict as well delimiter dot set strict equal to false fine now we just need to tell what are the header you just do the comma separated and map to the object so for that i just need to provide delimit delimited line tokenizer dot set names okay so these are the names i have which is the header id first name last name email gender contact number country and date of birth so this is the simple guys i'll just change it to the line tokenizer that will be more meaningful just paste it okay so this line tokenizer tokenizer will read the csv file with the comma separated value and these are the header we set here now the next step we need to map this particular information to the object right so there is a class in spring bean something like bean wrapper field mapper or something like this build wrapper bean wrapper field set mapper okay so i will give the generic this will map the csv file to the customer object i'll just give field set mapper equal to new fine then just specify the target set target is nothing customer class customer dot class that's fine so we have the line tokenizer we have the field set mapper line tokenizer will extract the value from the csv file field set mapper will map that value to the target class which is customer now both the object you need to provide to the line mapper line mapper dot set line tokenizer then line mapper dot set field set mapper which is field set mapper object then finally i will just return this line mapper that's it fine so we created reader object now the as for the flow diagram next object is item processor so if you want item processor you can create it so let me create a item processor class why there is a compilation error let me check okay let me check okay i just need to return this return item reader now next component i need to create the item processor so i'll just create new java class customer processor or something like that then i just need to 
implements this class from item processor if you observe the item processor came from the batch dot item package okay and there will be two argument which will be generic so i just need to provide the read the input object as a customer and write it as a customer inbound and outbound so i just need to implement the method see here the, the argument is the type of customer and the return type is customer as of now i am not going to write any logic in the processor i will just return the same object okay so later while explaining i will tell you the purpose of this item processor or this customer processor how you can filter out the information while processing the data or while reading and writing i will tell you in a moment now i just need to configure this customer processor object in my batch config class so i will go here and i will just write public customer processor processor return new customer processor then i will just define here at the rate bin fine now we added reader and processor next we need to create the component of item writer so there is a also class called repository item writer if you are using spring data jpa so i'll just use that class given by spring framework repository item writer or something like that okay let me check the class name repository item writer yeah and here also you need to define the generic which is customer and you can name it writer then just define at the red bin fine so here you can create the object of this repository item writer let me create the object of it writer equal to new fine so you can remove this then in this writer object you can set your repository which is set repository so you can if you remember we inject the repository here right i can set this customer repository so here i am simply saying in this item writer whatever the value we get from the reader just use my repository which is the customer repository i will better i will name it properly so that it will be more meaningful this is what my set repository just call the method of this customer repository what is the set method name or something like that yeah so the method name will be save okay so we are just telling in this writer just use my customer repository dot save method to write the information or the csv data to the database then simply i will just return it writer there is couple of classes guys you can use this repository item writer jdbc batch writer there is n number of class given by spring batch so if you go to this interface item writer this also implements from item writer okay so there is multiple classes you can just go to the spring batch documentation you can know it that's fine we created reader processor and writer in reader we tell to the spring batch read the file from the source in processor we don't have any logic as of now and in writer in writer we just specify write the csv information to the db which is the destination so we have completed these three steps item reader processor and writer now the next step we need to create the object of this step and we need to give these three component to this step so let me create the object of step you can create here public step then you can give the name step 1 let me add the input statement input class it should be came from org spring framework dot batch dot core i'll just annotate your at the red bin since we have step builder factory with us which we injected we can create the step object using this step builder factory okay so i can simply write here return step builder factory dot get you can give any name as your step name i will just give uh, batch or 
csv step fine and you can define the generic customer customer and you want to process the data in a chunk right so you can define the chunk size as a 10 process 10 record at a time that is how you can define the chunk now next you can provide who is your reader and writer and processor so reader i have created the bin of it then the processor i also created a bin of it then the next dot writer we also created bin of this writer object right now the next you can simply build it this is clear right as for the flow whatever you understand we just provided reader processor and writer object to this step and that is what i am doing here i created the step object and i am giving reader processor and writer to it then finally i am building that step object now next step you need to give that step object to this job object right so i'll just create another object of or another bin of job so just create it public job uh, you can give any name i'll just give import or i'll just give it job i'll just import this this should come from bash.core you can give a meaningful name run job or something like that here since we have the the way we have step builder factory we injected similarly we have the job builder factory i can use this job builder factory to create the object of job so i'll just use return job builder factory dot get of job name i will give the job job name as import customers info or something like that fine then here i just need to give the step step one that is what the bin we created here right you can give n number of step as i defined in this flow diagram a job can have multiple step you can have if i'll type here let me show you F L O W. You can give the step. Let's say step one. Similarly, you can create another step object dot flow dot. You can see there is another call next step. If you have other step object, you can give that step object here. Since I have only one step, so I don't have the step chaining here. I can remove this. I have the single flow, so I just want to execute that. Then next you can simply end and build that flow okay so i believe the flow diagram whatever you understand is clear for you create three component give it to step then create the step object give it to the job now this job object we need to give to the job launcher in our controller so that we can trigger the job ourselves by hitting the endpoint so we have the configuration ready here now let me go to the controller class i'll create a class called uh, let's say customer controller or you can name it job controller job controller at the rate rest controller fine then you can define a root url not this request mapping job or jobs something like that now here i will write a method who will trigger the job so for that i just need a object of job launcher job launcher also you need the object of job right job fine let me import this you can again okay better let me do the auto add if you don't want to auto add if you have a single constructor you can add these two attribute as a argument you no need to specify the auto add but for now let me add it auto add then i will just write a endpoint just write public void uh, you can give something like start or start i can name some i can give some meaningful name import csv to db or something like that job you can annotate here i will just give it post mapping 
fine now here i just need a object of job parameter because to trigger a job using job launcher dot run i need to pass this job object as well as the job parameter so i'll just use job parameter okay job parameters equal to there is a class called new job parameter builders or something like that yeah fine then here dot add long give the key i will give the timestamp as a key start at parameter as a timestamp system dot current time millisecond fine then i'll just give two job parameters that's fine now i just need to use the job launcher the second argument job launcher dot run method to trigger the job now here i just need to give two argument job and job parameters so there is a it will throw the exception you need to handle it using try catch so more action surround with try catch you can see there is multiple exception i can keep in a single catch block right collapse catch block add in a single catch statement that is fine now we have the launcher which will trigger the job so i just need to define an endpoint here as well jobs import customers this is my url so fine so we have the config let me cross verify spring batch config we created reader processor and writer step and job object then we have the processor we have the entity repo job controller that's fine now let me run our application so let me go to the main class i'll just run our application okay it seems there is some error in job controller require a bin of type this job go to the job controller and we already inject the bin of object of this job now we'll verify in spring batch config we created object of step but this job we didn't create the bin of it right so we missed to annotate at the red bin now i believe we are good let me start this application it will take few second spring boot yeah so if you observe it started on port 9191 right now if you will go and check in your database let me go to this java tiki this is where the schema which i use and if you see there is couple of more table added by spring batch batch job execution batch job execution context batch job execution params sequence instance then about batch step batch step execution context and its sequence and also we have the customer info table right so let me show you select star from this is what batch job execution params okay but i just want to show you the batch job execution table so let me remove this i'll just run this you can see there is no job running yet right we didn't start our batch job yet so there is no job instance id there is no create time uh, exit code exist message nothing is there so similarly i will check my step execution all are empty right then batch job instance everything is empty then i will check from my customer info table okay what is the table name let me go to my entity customers info right i will go here and i will just change here there is no entry now we are going to run our batch job so through using our endpoint okay this is what the endpoint jobs and import customers so i'll just open my postman then i'll just copy this url this is the post request i can directly trigger trigger it from my postman right 
let me clear the console go to the postman 9191 jobs this is what the endpoint i'll just send the request okay there is some error i believe we missed to add the setter getter in our entity yeah that's what the problem just add data at the rate all argument constructor at the rate no argument constructor fine that is why it is not able to get the getter and setter method invalid setter method you can see the error right let me restart my application application started on port 9192 now go to the postman let me clear the console before that go to the postman trigger the request you can see here there is a insert statement query still going on because it will process 1000 row from the csv file and finally this is what the step name csv step executed in 6 second 920 millisecond and this is what the job name import customers completed following this is what the start at uh, system dot current time millisecond and the status is completed it took around 6 second 994 millisecond to complete or to process 1000 row from csv to database right now if you'll go and check in your db i'll just select star from customer info you can see here it added the record sequentially because if you observe the id is mapped 1 2 3 4 5 6 10 up to 1000 there is no uh, gap or there is no shuffled record right it is on sequence so if that is the case if i will process 1000 or 1 lakh record then it may take 5 to 10 minute or more than that we don't we never know right then there is no sense to use this spring batch now you might ask me what is the advantages if i will use the spring batch same i can do manually one after another now that is automated using spring batch but still it is taking time so by default spring batch is synchronous it is not asynchronous okay so you need to tell to the spring batch execute the row from the source to destination concurrently so for that you need to define your custom task executor or you can set the concurrency level to the task executor now how we can do that go to spring batch config class and here you can define a class public task executor you can create object of it task executor then you can create the object of simple async task executor task executor equal to new simple async task executor and here you can set the concurrency limit set concurrency limit is 10 since i have only 1000 record i want 10 thread will execute parallelly or concurrently okay then finally return this task executor now we need to tell to the steps while doing the reading processing and writing just use this task executor okay so i will just add here just use the task executor which i am giving you with the concurrency limit 10 fine now what i'll do i'll just delete the information from this table otherwise it won't allow right because same csv file i am going to upload again the id will be duplicate we might get the constraints violation exception so better let me clear the information from the table delete from customers info okay yes but before that i just want to show you if you now check the batch job execution you can find the job execution id 1 and this were the version exist message last update now if you will check the step execution you can see here 1 2 2103 this were the step name fine this were the first time we got the error right that is were the exist message let me check it yeah parsing error at this because we didn't added the getter and setter so that time we the status is failed and the uh, last one is succeed fine then if you'll check the batch of instance you can see this so this table was added by spring boot 
to check the state of your job whether your job is succeed or not how many record is processed how many records are filled everything you can get all the info from this table okay real time wh while implementing this spring batch you need to play with this table you need to check the uh, job id and its status uh, how many row are succeed and how many are fails everything you need to uh, work on the real time now let's move to the code we'll start this application because we deleted the uh, row from this table now we have the fresh csv file which is 1000 row and we'll process with the 10 thread that is what we added the task executor now we just want to see how the spring batch will execute concurrently so that i will get the better performance right now let me rerun this stop and rerun so here we got this error let me check spring batch config task executor yeah because you didn't define this as a bean right just add it now let me cross verify once task executor set concurrency limit and this i want to return this object right not the method so you can remove this fine now let me start this application again so application started again on port 9191 now let me let me verify the record in my table first i believe we deleted it but let's cross verify once again there is no record okay now go to the postman before that let me clear the console go to the postman and send the request now we'll see the total time you can see here now the job is done in three second th 3 dot 13 second right now if i'll go and check in my db select star from this table you can see here now the customer id begin with 788 8786 there is no order now now 10th thread concurrently executing each row from the csv file so we never know which row will take the or which thread will take the which row to process that is how you are getting the record not in a sequence here right 788 we don't know if you go down 366 then if you go down 192 this is how it will concurrently execute okay now what i'll do I'll just remove again everything then I'll rerun it delete from this okay now I'll just trigger again send it it take two seconds to complete okay so if you'll go here and if you'll check now it started 949 it again started from the end fine because we don't know like thread will never give you the exact expected output it will depends on the thread scheduler which thread will get a chance to execute that is how that is how you are getting order not in a sequence that is fine if it depends based on your requirement what is the concurrency limit you want to set 10 20 25 or whatever that depends on your business that is fine we understand how we can process multiple record or the large set of record in a fraction of second that is what the main motto of this tutorial but now in this example we don't have control on the thread we don't know which thread will take the which record but if you want to take the control or if you want to take the ownership on top of thread that you will tell to the thread one execute row one to ten or thread two execute from hundred to two hundred if you want to set your own limit on thread you can do that using spring batch partitioning okay that I will cover in my next tutorial that is what spring boot or spring batch partitioning you have the control over the thread you will tell to the spring batch give first 100 row to the thread one next 100 to the thread two like that you can configure it okay but before close this session I will just give you a small example of the processor because we write the uh, spring batch processor but we are not using it okay so let me open my table select star from customer info okay if you observe i have some country bangladesh china iran okay so i'll just filter out with this united state let me check the count of it the number of record 
count star from this table twenty five. Okay. Let's say you have a requirement. You want to filter out, or you want to process only the customer who came from the or whose country is United States. How I can add this filter statement while reading and processing it, or reading and writing it? In between, if you want to do any processing or any validation or any filtration, you can use this uh, processor. Okay. Now I just want to filter out only the customer who whose country is United States. So for that, what I can do, I will go to my customer processor. Here, I will just write a statement if customer dot get country dot equals I'll just copy the proper name United States. Then only return that customer object, or else return the null. Now it won't process all the record. It will get the record and it will check whose country is United States. If the if that record satisfied this condition. If that customer belongs from the country United States, then only it will return that customer object, so that it will go to the writer and the writer will save it. Otherwise, it will just return the null. So we'll verify that. Let me restart it. Meanwhile, let me delete the DB. Fine. So let's wait it to complete. Application restarted. Now go to the postman. Before that, let me clear this console. Go to the postman and just send the request. It took 15:34 millisecond because the record is very less because processor filter out the record based on the country. Now, if you go and check in your DV, you will find total 25 record. You can see here, right? I just will show you the information rather than count. Start from customer info you can find all the record still it's executing concurrently because the order is not in sequence and you can find only the record whose state or whose country is usa total record count is 25 because that is what the filter we added in the uh, customer processor okay this is just one sample filter i added but it depends based on your use case you can filter out the condition from the object or from the Information you are getting from the source. So this is how you can process large volume of data within a fraction of second using Spring Batch. You can add your own task executor to make it faster rather than executing in a single thread or in a synchronous way. You can make it asynchronous using the task executor so that you can get the better performance. Right? That is what we find here. And do let me know in comment section. If you really want to know more about Spring Batch partitioning with example, that's all about this particular video, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Meet you soon with a new concept.